Reckon presents the history of Alabama. In the beginning, Alabama was underwater. Then Pangea busted apart and the world came together. But continent building is hard and Alabama sank again. People finally showed up and lived in caves. They learned how to grow maize and Alabama loved its grits ever since. Native Alabamians were pretty solid farmers by the time the Spanish showed up. But Hernando de Soto wanted gold, not breakfast, so there was trouble. De Soto was a jerk. He'd go from town to town, kidnapping Native American leaders to keep them in line. But that didn't work on the Mobilla Indians, led by the badass Chief Tuscaloosa. There was a fight and the Spanish lost a bunch of guys, but guns won. Another first. By 1600, the tribes formed nations, leading future Alabama fourth graders to learn the chant Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee Creek. It wouldn't last. The Spanish and French and English all wanted a piece of Alabama. In 1701, the French started settling Mobile. In 1703, they celebrated the first Mardi Gras, and they haven't shut up about it since. The Mississippi Territory was always open to the slave trade, but the first slave ships started to arrive in the 1720s. They'd keep coming even after it wasn't legal. Everything changed because cheap, unwilling labor was like free gas to fuel the money machine. By 1800, there were 733 white people living in the Alabama Territory and 517 black people and a whole bunch of Native Americans who wouldn't stand still long enough for counting. In 1819, Alabama became a state and the population boomed. There were 85,000 white people by then and 42,000 black people. But it was pretty much over for the natives. After Andrew Jackson became president, he marched them away to make room for even more white people and their slaves. Alabama was still figuring out the government thing. The capital bounced all over the state before landing in Montgomery. Southern states said they had a right to do as they pleased on issues like slavery and were willing to go to war over it. So by 1860, things were ready to blow. The election of Abe Lincoln was too much, so the rest of the South joined Alabama and agreed to get out of the United States and build their own government with slavery. There came four years of hell in which Montgomery for a time was the capital of the Confederacy, but the South lost. Then came Reconstruction, which was like a war too, only longer. After the war, white people and former slaves got equal votes, in theory, so black people took office for the first time in Alabama, and it scared the crap out of those who held power. The Ku Klux Klan terrorized the South to fight political and social change, and several Republican politicians, black and white, were killed. The economy collapsed in the 1870s, the federal government withdrew troops that were guaranteeing fair elections for blacks and whites alike, and so Democrats took over and held on for a century. In 1871, Birmingham was established in a valley where all the ingredients for steel could be found in one convenient spot, and it grew like magic. In 1901, the state's big mules realized they had a problem, because if everybody could vote, the powers that had always been were screwed. So they wrote up a constitution to establish white supremacy. They made the legislature really strong and local governments really weak to keep them from rising up. And that set the tone for, for forever. Confederate vets and women who loved them began an effort to rewrite the history of slavery, erecting monuments to the lost cause of the Old South and telling stories of antebellum chivalry and grace. Alabama birthed Jim Crow and created formal ways to keep black people from voting. Millions of blacks fled the South's dangers, seeking opportunity elsewhere in the Great Migration. Alabama missed the days of free labor, so it turned to the convict lease system, which put people in jail and sold them to work on farms and coal mines. Many of them died, especially black people. That ended in 1928, though people have been trying to imprison others for profit ever since. That was about the same time Alabama discovered its true love. The University of Alabama football team beat Washington in the Rose Bowl, putting Southern football on the map. Roll Tide. Alabama was changing. Sort of. The Great Depression hit Alabama hard, but electricity soon came for the first time and the state's geography was changed forever. There was a surplus of power in North Alabama, and the U.S. built an arsenal there with one mission, killing Nazis. Then, Huntsville teamed up with former Nazi rocket scientists to help NASA put men on the moon, and Huntsville's military industrial complex was born. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat. The Magic City became Birmingham. Dr. King went to jail and wrote a letter. Freedom Riders bust across the state. Foot soldiers marched from Selma to Montgomery. And George Wallace stood in the schoolhouse door. In 1960, Harper Lee published To Kill a Mockingbird. It changed America's views on race. And students have been pretending to read it ever since. In Tuscaloosa, Bear Bryant was transforming the game of football. Also, Auburn had a team. In 1974, Mobile native Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record and he didn't have to take growth hormones to do it.
In 1986, after Wallace's last term as governor, the two Democrats seeking to replace him fought so hard against each other they tainted the whole election, and Guy Hunt became the first Republican governor since Reconstruction. He'd later be convicted of misusing money from his inaugural fund, thus beginning Alabama's era of corruption in which three of four elected governors would be convicted of crimes. In 1993, Alabama lured Mercedes-Benz to the state. 25 years later, most Alabamians are proud of that, even if they still can't afford one. A year later, Michael Jordan moved to Birmingham to play baseball. Three years later, he returned to basketball, after defeating a group of space aliens to save Looney Tunes. Yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, some other stuff happens, sure, but every story has to have an ending. And just like Jordan, we wanted to go out on a high note. Just forget all that stuff about Bentley and Roy Moore. Just think of those as the Washington Wizard years. For Reckon, that's all, folks.